Let's talk Chunky Gravis on the front line and Twin Links Bolters and Power Fists with an overview of the Primaris Aggressors in Warhammer 40k 10th. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking Space Marines and in this video I thought we'd do a focus review of the Aggressor Squad and in particular look at a couple of power combos that you can do with the new Space Marine Codex. These guys particularly like the Gladius and the Firestorm. In the video we'll talk about the models briefly, then look over the datasheet rules, all the things that can support them in the Codex and roughly how I'd think about using them in game. In Warhammer 40k, the Aggressor Squad was one of the first units in Gravis armour alongside the Inceptors, a big and chunky Primaris armour mark with some very thick armour. Initially they perhaps looked like the way that Games Workshop might have been thinking about doing Primaris Terminators, but in general they seem to just operate a very different niche in people's minds. Even if they do kind of amount to armoured elites with power fists and bolt weapons, they're perhaps a bit less storage feeling than Terminators and a bit more high-tech big armour approach. In general, they tend to be deployed for close quarter warfare by the chapter, often used to flush out enemies from bunkers or strong points, massive close quarter firepower with bolters or flamethrowers, backed up by chunky power fists to deal with elites. The kit themselves are £35, €45 Euros or $60 from Games Workshop. As per standard for the three model Space Marine box sets, maybe just feeling a little bit on the expensive side for just three models. The point per dollar ratio isn't great at slightly less than two, but there is worse out there. If you're looking to pick them up for a little bit cheaper, a few of the Combat Patrol box sets do feature them, the Blood Angels one and the Death Watch one in particular. And at one point there was an easy build kit for them that only came with the Flamestorm gauntlets. You might occasionally see that pop up on eBay, potentially through the Imperium magazine. I think the models look nice enough though, and they have the choice between Bolt Storm or Flamestorm gauntlets to equip the models with. I feel like they're one of the models that's often tended to be one of the stronger options for Space Marines over the past few years. Just by what they're equipped with, they tend to deal a fair bit of damage. As ever, if you're looking to pick these up, then the discount retailers will generally do you a better deal than Games Workshop. There's plenty of links down in the video description as ever for those. Element Games for 15% off, Gap Games in Australia for 20%, and Fenris Workshop in Canada for around 10%. If you order through any of those, a small amount goes to help support all Spets tactics without costing you any more and saving you money compared with GW. Getting into their datasheet in Codex Space Marines though, this is the Aggressor Squad profile. 110 points for 3 of them or 220 per 6. I've got a nice chunky defensive profile with toughness 6, a 3 plus save and 3 wounds, though no invulnerable saves like the Terminators get. That kind of profile is going to be really quite resilient to small arms, anything strength 5 or below. But in reality their defence per points just isn't really particularly good, effectively costing a bit more than 35 points per model. That sort of profile really is quite easy to kill with mid-strength fire like Melcher or Plasma Guns, and anti-tank weapons will be very efficient against them in Ds. For a damage versus defence unit, they definitely skew a lot more to damage. Their movement is quite slow at 5 inches, which means they often need a delivery system of some sort to get them into the enemy, as they do want to be ideally as close to the foe as possible with their range and melee. And they're only objective control 1, meaning that they're not quite as good as troops and things on objectives, though that's not exactly unexpected for elites. For their range damage, the aggressors can choose to equip either the Flamestorm Gauntlets or the Boltstorm Gauntlets, the Boltstorm Gauntlets coming paired with the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher that sits on their backpacks. The Flamestorm Gauntlets get you D6 plus 1 shots each, a 12 inch range with strength 4, AP 0 and damage 1, and ignores cover, torrent and twin links. The Boltstorm and Fragstorm both go out to 18 inches, the Bolters get you 3 twin links Bolter shots, and the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher gets you D6 blast shots, but they don't ignore cover and they don't have torrent to auto hit. Overall they'll typically average a roughly similar amount of hits on their target, the trade off is perhaps most whether you want the extra range and the blast keyword, or whether you want the hits to ignore cover and also have the strength of some very powerful overwatch. At AP0 their shooting might be a little bit lacklustre against anything with a good armour save, but fortunately they get a close quarters firepower special rule, which means that each time they shoot against the unit that's closest to them, the aggressive firepower gets an extra pip of AP against that target. That really is quite a big deal for extra damage output, and very relevant against things with higher saves. Does mean that fine positioning of these guys can be a bit key though, they could have a lot of damage output lost if the opponent has just deployed things in a way that the target that you need to shoot isn't going to be the closest one, and something else kind of tough but isn't going to be damaged by bolters is there instead. I feel like for damage outputs, the Boltstorm and Flamestorm gauntlets is kind of well balanced. Just for raw damage, the Flamestorm tends to win out unless you're against a target that gets a lot of blast keyword hits. Here's the breakdown for a unit of three of them firing against ten Termigans, and then five Intercessors and Terminators, and finally a Space Marine Rhino tank. 
I'd say for fairly light, small arms type shooting, their damage output really is pretty impressive. A pretty good chance to kill an entire horde squad in one volley. Around about two space marines, maybe two or three with the flamestorm, two or three wounds off a terminator, and just a bit of chip damage against vehicles. Overall for the damage output, unless you're against hordes, it's a very small win for the flamestorm, but honestly I feel like these numbers are so close that it doesn't really matter too much, and it's far more about the bonus rules that you want for them. For the Bolt Storm, the range is quite big as 18 inches isn't that big in the first place, never mind going down to 12. Blast is handy, and it means that they can receive buffs a fair bit better. You get to use Oath of Moment and Lethal Hits, say from an Apothecary Biologist, which you can't use with the Flamestorm. The Flamestorm, on the other hand, does have its slightly improved damage output against most things, and ignoring cover could be really big against things with somewhat good saves, plus being able to threaten some fairly brutal Overwatch for 1 CP is really quite nasty. Overall, I feel like both of them are really quite viable, though different attachments will quite heavily push you to one or the other. Finally, for their data sheet, their melee damage is really quite respectable as well. They each get three attacks at strength 8, AP 2, damage 2, and again with the twin links keywords to allow them some big rerolls and punch up against heavier vehicles really quite reliably. And in the codex, they hit on a 3, plus, whereas the index they hit on a 4. Overall, that's really quite a nicely generalist profile, killing around about 6 Tyranid Termagants, 4 Space Marine Intercessors, maybe their ideal target pretty much, 1 or 2 Terminators, 4 wounds to a Rhino tank, and then something like 2 or 4 to a heavier tank like a Lamb Raider. Overall, you wouldn't generally expect a squad of 3 of them to wipe out most squads in one charge. They feel like they're going to at least reliably do some sort of respectable damage though, and particularly if you're using a bigger squad, then that's more than quite a lot of enemy units might be able to handle. Overall, between their big shooting and big fighting, they're just generally a very good damage dealing unit, and just about any turn that they get to both shoot and then fight in sequence, they seem to have really quite a good chance of making back their initial points investment in dead enemy units. In general, they're best against hordes and standard space marine stat lines, but don't do too badly against 3 plus armor save vehicles and terminators. On top of that, they do seem to be one of the best units for synergy type options, character buffs, or stratagems. But given that they move quite slowly and they don't really have the best defense per point, that mainly means that the challenge is to get them to the front before they get killed. Absolutely a unit that you want to have the first strike and not the other way around. Next up, let's take a look at some standard character buffs and some ways to get into combat, and then a couple of bigger detachment-specific combos. From the core codex, there's just the two Gravis Armoured characters that can attach to them that aren't chapter-locked, the first of which is the new Apothecary Biologist at 55 points. He gives them lethal hits, and he can join them even if there's a captain present, so you could potentially have really quite a big scary unit there. He doesn't really have all that much personal threat, barring a couple of attacks that'll be okay against hordes in combat, plus one damage two shot with the Absolver Bolt Pistol. And besides the lethal hits, the only real thing that he does is to improve the unit's objective control. Being OC3 by himself is handy, going up to a massive OC9 if the aggressors manage to kill something in combat while he's around. The lethal hits are only going to be relevant if you're using the Bolt Storm for the most part, kind of wasted if you're using the Flamestorm ones just to buff the melee. But if you are going Bolt Storm and Frag Storm, then they're often going to be wounding on a 5 plus or worse. It's going to be a 20% damage increase for the Bolt Storm ones in that case, or a 50% increase for the Frag Storms that don't get the twin linked. Between those two and also the boost to melee, I think he's really quite a respectable include. And as we'll talk about in a second, probably best in the Gladius with the big fire discipline combo. The other option for the unit is the Gravis Captain for 80 points. Aggressors perhaps feel like the best place to put him, given that he's got really quite a good melee profile that wants to be at the front. If you take the dual power fist loadout, and that'll be an extra 6 attacks at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 2, all hitting on a 2 plus as well. And if the unit should get killed, then he's hard to take down in his own right, 6 wounds and halving damage against him. Obviously the main reason to take him though is for the free stratagems, one zero CP battle tactic per turn kind of depends on the detachment a bit. Certainly nice in the Firestorm Assault Force, where there's all sorts of battle tactics in offer, as we'll get to. Seems fine in Gladius for either Storm of Fire or Lance Melee, and at least the majority of the others have something useful. If you want to make a Flamestorm unit a bit more dangerous, then he'd be your man. I think at 80 points, he's overall really quite a good deal for the free stratagem, plus his own fairly beefy damage and defensive stat lines. For delivering the aggressors to the front, there's a fair few options. I'd say perhaps one of the most reliable would probably be the land raiders. I feel like they seem to be just very well suited for the aggressors at the moment. Move them 10 inches, drop them out the front to shorten their charge range, then they can both shoot and also make a charge after that if they're in range of things. And the land raiders do seem to be efficient enough in their own points rights to get them plays. If you're going for a big combo with 6 of them plus a character, then it would either be a crusader or redeemer. 
I'd probably be most tempted by the Redeemer myself. Otherwise, you could foot slog them. Might be a little bit more viable if you've got options for advancing and damaging, such as the Gladius Task Force, perhaps. For smaller units of them, I feel like that's not the worst as well. You might be able to hide them just behind a bit of terrain that's towards the edge of your deployment zone and act as a fairly scary countercharge type unit to threaten it midfield objectives that your opponent might want to move on to. It just might make it a little bit tricky to deliver them to the fight without them getting attacked first. Otherwise, reserves are probably a little bit less good for them. Strategic reserve, I feel, is probably going to limit them a bit too much with their threat range, and perhaps best to go for something that's a little bit more dedicated shooting if you're going for strategic reserve and hoping to damage things. Though I guess if you're doing a shooting combo, there are a few options for teleporting them around the board. Death Watch and Blood Angels can both do that in various ways, and Uriel Ventress can allow them to deep strike if that makes sense. Finally, the Vanguard Spearhead enhancement can potentially get them to infiltrate as well. They feel like one of the better units to do that one with. Getting into more broad codex rules, and I feel like Oath of Moment is really quite a good combo for these guys. As mentioned, they're a unit that has the potential to be killing their own points cost in a single shooting and fight phase, and allowing them four rerolls to hit while they're doing that is going to get you even more value out of them. They're going to be getting quite a lot of wound rolls successfully in the first place due to twin links, so it's not like they're missing the wound rolls from Oath of Moment that it used to have. Armour of Contempt is quite nice for 1 CP, very good on things that lack invulnerable saves, and might be even better if they can find a way to finish their activations in cover, and potentially they could coordinate with other marine shooting buffs out there, things like the Incursors for a plus 1 to hit, or the various Storm Speeders for buffs against ideal targets, either Hail Strikes for extra AP, or perhaps the Thunder Strike for a plus 1 to wound against vehicles, which could be rather brutal with their twin linked with the Bolt Weapons. All the detachments from Codex Space Marines, both the Gladius and the Firestorm Force, really stand out for me. Gladius gives them easy access to advance and either shooting or charging after that with the Combat Doctrines. That's really quite nice on a slower unit with a low threat range. And both the Damage Dealer Stratagems are pretty handy for them as well. Lance Melee and Storm of Fire, plus the Fire Discipline Enhancement combo that we'll talk about next. Perhaps as they've often seemed like they've been a good fit with Salamanders, the Firestorm Assault Force is also very nice. Strength 5 shooting within 12 inches really is quite a big breakpoint against a lot of enemy infantry. And again, they get the Assault keyword here, so they can get into that kind of range a bit easier. Otherwise, 1 CP for plus 1 to wound means they could even be wounding the toughest things around most of the time. And there's a 2 CP stratagem for devastating wound torrents. Again, we'll talk about that combo in a second. The Force in Battle Enhancement to basically cancel a save each turn could be really quite good value on them, and they can use the transport tricks really quite nicely as well, perhaps particularly operating out of a Lamb Raider or a Repulsor perhaps. Finally, for the Vanguard Spearhead, they get a bit of extra durability at longer range. It could be really quite a nice choice for that Infiltrate unit to start somewhere up the board and somewhere very threatening. You don't want these guys charging and killing things turn one in the enemy deployment zone. Situationally, their one command point stratagem for a plus one to hit an extra AP at greater than 12 inch range could be quite nice on the Fragstorm unit. The Anvil Siege Force doesn't really do much for them for the core rule as they're not going to want to stay still, but the vast majority of the stratagems could at least be situationally useful on them and they can pick up enhancements for ignore cover or a six plus feel no pain. The Iron Storm Spearhead gives them a single reroll that could be handy in melee plus an ignore modifier stratagem. And the Storm Lance Force allows them to advance and charge, and can also advance at shoot and charge for 1 CP as well. Perhaps not the most massive amount of synergy beyond that, but could make them a little bit more interesting for a counter charge unit for slogging. Getting into the really big damage combos though, and first up we have the rather well known Gladius Fire Discipline combo. I did talk about this in a video on the channel previously, and since then Oath of Moment has been nerfed a bit, which does tone it down a tiny bit, but compared with just about anything else in Codex Space Marines, losing the full wound rerolls is kind of not very important to this. For this one, you need 6 aggressors with the Bolt Storm Gauntlets and the Frag Storm Grenade Launchers, an Apothecary Biologist for 55 points, and the Fire Discipline Enhancement for 30 points. That's the one that gives you Sustained Hits 1 and Critical Hits on a 5 plus in Devastator Doctrine. That means that when you're in Devastator Doctrine, you get to have a 5 plus for both sustained and lethal hits, and you can opt to turn Devastator Doctrine on for 1 CP if necessary, if it happens to fall on the wrong turn. Then to boost the AP up to AP2, there's Storm of Fire for an extra CP, that also allows them to ignore cover as well. And then combining that with Oath of Moment on the target means that you get to reroll everything that isn't a 5 or 6, to try and fish for as many of those sustained and lethal hits as possible, and then all of those land home at AP2 and ignoring cover. If this goes off to the absolute maximum, then the damage output is kind of ridiculous for essentially Space Marine small arms. You'd kill around about 45 Termagants, so far more than any one squad there. 13 Space Marine Intercessors, 
around about 5 or 6 Space Marine Terminators, pretty mad just with the bolt weapons, 19 wounds to a Rhino, so that's basically most normal 3 plus save vehicles killed in one volley of shooting, and then just 13 wounds to an enemy Land Raider or Lehman Ross or something. Probably a little bit shy of killing it, but still again very respectable given that that's small arms firing against the heaviest tanks around. Overall pretty brutal numbers and well worth it if you can put it into something meaningful. Ideally after that you'd also then just go on to follow up with a charge as well, where you'll have 18 of those twin links power fist attacks with lethal hits as well. Probably should be around about enough to finish off the other half of a Space Marine Terminator squad if needed. Overall pretty brutal stuff, this one is quite a common one that's run in the Gladius. Otherwise for the Firestorm Assault Force, this one's a bit more simple, but I thought it was worth showcasing just how dangerous the devastating Wounds Flamestorm Gauntlets can be. These are the numbers for 6 aggressors with the Flamestorm Gauntlets, plus a Gravis Captain in the units to use the 2CP immolation protocols completely for free. These guys can jump out of their Land Raider Redeemer, or however they were getting to the front, and just blast away with 27 auto hits at strength 5 plus the captain shooting. They get full wound rerolls with the twin linked and devastating wounds on 6s. Against anything with particular high saves, it is going to make sense to try and get as many 6s as possible, so you just reroll everything that wasn't a 6. Overall, that averages out to around about 20 dead Termagants from the shooting, around about 8 dead standard Space Marines, roughly 4 enemy Terminators dealt with, 10 wounds to a Toughness 9 vehicle, or 8 wounds to something really heavy like a Land Raider. Maybe not quite as general purpose or round obscene damage compared with the Gladius combo, though I'd say it's far less resources, as if you have a captain in the unit you don't actually have to spend any CP at all. Though if you really wanted absolute maximal damage you could also throw in 1 CP for Crucible of Battle. Again ideally after that you charge into combat and get the Gravis Captain's Power Fist to work along with the aggressors. Finally, rattling through the chapter specific options, the Codex chapters do have some good stuff for them. Marnie's Kalgar and his Honor Guard do seem to be a particularly good fit for these guys. He allows them to advance, shoot and charge, which is really big for their threat range, and it's perhaps quite a nice way to go if you're foot slogging them. The Honor Guard that are in the unit as well are really quite nice for tanky bodies with a 4 plus invulnerable save, meaning that you've got a good chance to not lose a model if you get hit by a melter weapon or something. Otherwise, Uriel Ventris could deep strike that big Bolter Discipline combo that we talked about earlier. For the Imperial Fist, Tor Garadon adds ignore cover and a bit of personal vehicle killing damage. Might be okay for a fairly maximal squad that also includes an Apothecary Biologist perhaps. The Iron Hands have Iron Father Fyros to give them a 5 plus feel no pain type save. He does add his own personal melee as well, though perhaps feels a little bit at odds with using his vehicle healing tricks. If you're using aggressors, they're likely wanting to go towards the front line. Might just mean that Fyros isn't in a good position to help out the vehicles. Finally, for Salamanders, it's perhaps kind of annoying that neither Vulcan nor Ajax Agatone really add all that much. The Flamestorm Gauntlets already get four wound rerolls, so Vulcan can't really do anything for them anyway. I guess he's better off with Infernus Marines and the like. Finally, for the Divergent chapters, the Blood Angels could make them a bit fightier with their Sons of Sanguinius detachment. Strength 9 and 4 attacks each is some serious melee fight. For the shooting combos as well, the Librarian Dreadnought could perhaps teleport the big Gladius combo and get that exactly where you need it on the table. Black Templars get the option of Feel No Pain from their detachment. You could have a Captain with the Ten Houses Bones for a 5 plus Feel No Pain to make a bit more of a balanced, durable unit. Their chance to trap units in melee could be kind of big as well. Might be the difference between them eating a load of firepower or not. The Death Watch can get various handy damage buffs from their detachment. You could also use the Bolter Stratagems like Anti-Infantry 2 Plus and maybe could make use of the Teleportarium to get in range if they needed. That one's detachment specific though, so no combining with Gladius or the Firestorm ones. For the Dark Angels, I feel like they might struggle to get a look in compared with their unique Terminator units. The detachment does have some usable stratagems, though I feel like they're just not really going to gain loads from the Unforgiven themselves, more from the detachment. And finally for the Space Wolves, the Sagas are fairly good if they can be activated. The same as just about any melee capable unit there. Overall, for 110 points for three of them, I would rate them as fairly strong in Codex Space Marines, but definitely a high investment unit that absolutely needs to be delivered safely to the front if you possibly can find a way to. If including them in my list, my first thought would be to go for one of those big damage combos, either the Firestorm one or the Gladius one, and my first choice to take them to the front line would probably be a Land Raider Redeemer, I think, though teleporting them around with either Uriel Ventris or the Blood Angels Librarian Dreadnought could be quite good fun and could get all that damage exactly where needed, no questions asked. 
I feel like smaller squads aren't terrible though. They maybe might be a little bit better in Gladius and Firestorm once more where they get to advance and still deal damage. I probably wouldn't go too heavy on them. I generally want to play hide and deal damage with them. So ideally take up residence in a ruin where your opponent can't shoot them and then make sure that they're the ones that are striding out to get the first shooting and combat rounds in and definitely not the other way around. Ideally when they get to the fight they'd need to try and make sure that the closest target is the one that they actually want to shoot so it's not always going to happen. Barring any wombo combo damage things, they ideally want to be shooting lighter infantry or things with either low toughness or low saves. And then their ideal prey and melee is going to be things like elite or heavy infantry where they wound really quite efficiently and medium AP and damage too should see them do a lot of damage. The next turn I'd suspect that they're often going to be an absolute top priority for the opponent to eliminate. You might not get more than one damage turn out of them. They might be able to do a little bit more with Overwatch. Flamestorms would be pretty brutal with that, and you could at least stack a bunch of saves if you had a big unit with the Bolt Storm and Frag Storm, and also the Apothecary Biologist for auto wounds. Overall, really in quite a good spot though. Glad to see that these guys are interesting and playable, and have good stuff for multiple detachments, and also not a unit without weaknesses as well. I wouldn't say auto include, and do have a few downsides. In any case, let me know what you make of the Primaris Aggressors in 10th edition though. How have you been finding them in Codex Space Marines so far? Look forward to hearing all your thoughts and ideas down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly be keeping the regular 40k content coming, and there'll certainly be a whole load more Space Marine unit reviews and attachment reviews to come. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.